Against books, the home secretary is. We can't stamp out literature in our own country. We can at least stop its being brought in. Hello, hello. What's this? That's a book too. One I've just written. Your name's Sue, is it? Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. That's a pseudonym. Pseudonym. I can read, thank you very much. No, you don't understand. It's sort of a joke. Pseudonym? Pseudonym. Nom de plume. And what's this? Vomit. It was an accident. You come along with me, Briggs. Sir? I, I really must catch the train. The worst thing's the missing trains, young Susan. Books, sir. Goes by the name of Susan. Well, now, what's this about books? Just books. I'll be the judge of that. Thank you. Hello, Agatha. I never saw you on a boat. I can't tell you the things that have been happening to me in there. The way they looked. Too, too shaming. Positively surgical, my dear, and such wicked old women. I shall bring up every cabinet minister and all the newspapers and give them the most shy-making details. Let's find the train. Oh, I've got troubles of my own. Well, now, you can take these books and the dictionary. Minus this page. Thank you very much. But this bright young things. That's just downright dirt and is marked for burning. What? There isn't a word in the book. You must be misinterpreted. I know dirt when I see it. Or I shouldn't be where I am today. Do you realise my whole livelihood depends on that book? I've already been paid for it. And my livelihood depends on keeping filth like that out of the country. Archie Schwartz giving a lovely party tonight, so we simply have to catch the next train or I shall under the chance to dress. Archie who? Oh, I don't know what Lord Monomart's going to say. I suppose he wants his money back. The dress is getting altogether too bothersome. Except when they aren't. Now, you won't forget to come to Archie Schwartz's party. Well, I've got to get to my hotel. And... You're not still staying at Shepherd's, are you, darling? So many little people. What can they all do with their lives? And when you and Nina are going to get married, I have just the trousers to wear, only you won't do it. Well, I'm not sure we'll be able to. Just here, we'll be fine. Thank you, driver. Darling, if you don't marry her soon, someone else will. And that will never do. Take the lady on to Grover Street and drop my luggage off at Shepherd's Hotel, St. James's. Right, sir. Bye, darling. See you at Archie's. London, Adam. There's no place like it on God's green earth. Yep. Why the city? For the first 20 years of my life, the biggest town I ever saw or hoped to see was Necessity, Manitoba. Population 1,230 souls. Now, here I am, prince of the greatest metropolis the world has ever known. Gives a man to think, wouldn't you say? Certainly. Certainly. You're right there, Adam. Certainly. Now, I believe you owe me a book. A little late in delivery? Ah, well now, the customs confiscated it. Now, see here, you owe me 100 pounds or one book. Well, I suppose I could write it again. Was it good? Well, you know... Don't ever believe English modesty is charming. It's irritating is what it is. It was exceptionally good. What is it with you people? I have plenty of you working for me. Lord Balcarum, genuine Earl, does my gossip for me under the name Mr. Chatterbox. Did you know that? Yes, I did know. A friend of yours, I suppose. Bright Young Things. That was the title, right? Tearing the lid off the young idle and rich? My readers can't get enough of that kind of thing, Mr. Symes. I put Signor Mussolini on the front page, nobody buys a copy. Put a picture of one of yours set in a nightclub, and 
Can't print enough copies. Are you a butterfly or a bee? Excuse me? Do you want to flit around looking pretty, doing nothing, or do you want to make honey? I can't figure you out. Your father worked for a living. A Greek professor, wasn't he? Well, professor off Greek rather than the Greek professor. He'd never get cute with someone you owe money to. What do you want to do with your life? Oh. Win the Nobel Prize? Raise children, smoke a pipe, climb mountains, fly airplanes, find the cure to influenza, govern India. Hell, God gave you two legs and an immortal soul in the capital city of the largest empire the world has ever seen. You're going to spend it eating plumber's eggs and sucking up cocktails? May I speak to Miss Blunt, please? I'll just see if she's in. Who's speaking, please? Adam Symes. Oh, Adam. How are you, Nina? Well, I've got rather a pain just at present. But... Poor Nina. Why are we putting on a voice? Thought you might be Madame du Rock. I owe her for some hats. Welcome home, my darling. Where are you? Fleet Street. Darling, there was rather a disaster at customs. Yes, I know. Agatha called me. No. She said they simply stripped her. No, not that. Something awful happened to me. You too? Were they horribly intimate? That's me to Archie Schwartz's party, and you can tell me all about it. Who is this Archie Schwartz? Oh, someone new. Rather vulgar, but very rich. If you are coming, don't dress up. No one will. Except Archie, which is always too funny. Nina, I don't know how to say this, but... I don't think I shall be able to marry you after all. Oh. Adam, you are a bore. Why not? They confiscated my book. Beasts. Who did? I'll tell you about it tonight. Yes, do. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, my sweet. Shepherd's Hotel, St. James, please. Actually, I think I'll I'll walk. Princess. Don't let me catch you wearing that scent again. Well, you are a stranger. Hello, Lossie. Welcome back. How's your father? Dead? Oi, Bella! Mr. Fenwick Symes post, if you please. I don't know. I should let her go, really. She's wearing New Eden Noel, would you believe? Thank you, Basilia. It's a pleasure. We've given you up for dead, dear. How was Monte Carlo? Can. Same thing. We kept your room for you. I expect you're ready to pay your little bill now. Well, as a matter of fact, Come just... on in. We were just thinking about having a little drink. <laughs> Ooh. Well, now, let me introduce um... you. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Wass's name. And uh, over there in the corner, that's the Major. And that's an American judge. And there's the King of Pomerania. Anatolia, actually. But, alas, no longer. Poor chap, it's a shame. I gave him the boot after the war. Hasn't got a penny. It's true. They steal my throne. There now. My godfather, the good Archduke of Austria, gave me one time gold fountain pen with eagles on him. I loved well my gold fountain pen. And then there was liberal minister, one man of exceeding evilness. He come to talk with me and thump and talk too much about some things I not understand, and, and, and when he gone, where was my gold fountain pen with eagles on him? Gone on. Oh, damn shame, sir. A damn shame. And yeah, now, how about a drink? I'll have a murder for Sean Dodgers. Yeah. <laughs> they can't do this. Four coins. One on each corner. Do that. Do that. Do that. Two there. Two, two there. Oh, three there. Oh, four. Four coins all on the corner. There you are. Do it again if you like. That was a clever boy. Where'd they teach you that then? Chapman Train showed me. Yeah, it didn't look very hard. Just you try. Anyway, anything you like, you can't do it. How much will you bet? Anything you like. 500 pounds? Go on, you do it. He's got lots of money. All right. So, two there, two there, two there, 
Gee there. Four there. There we go. I'm cheered. Don't see anyone do it like that before. I've won a lot of money this week with that trick. There you are. Well, I'll be. <laughs> Oh, I'll expect you like to buy everyone a drink now. Certainly. Toss you for it. Double or quits. Best of three. Very well. Heads. It is. Call again? Heads. Oh, I'm cheered. You are a lucky chap. <laughs> Darling, it's all right about our getting married. I've got a thousand pounds. Did Angel, how? I'll tell you about it when we meet. Oh. Oh. Well, now, what would you all do if you had a thousand pounds? Me, I would buy me one gold pen with eagles on him. I know what I'd do. I'd put it on a horse. What horse? I'll tell you a likely outsider for the November handicap. Injun Rudder is a 20 to 1 and the odds will lengthen. You put a thousand pounds on it to win, and it did. You'd be rich, wouldn't you? Yes, so I would. I'll give you the thousand and I'll fix it. All right. Why not? Sounds indecent. Have a drink. By all means. Darling, I've got a very important question to ask. Do you know of a horse called Indian Runner? Oh, quite the worst sort of horse. Mary Mass's mother owns it. It's not likely to win the November handicap. Quite sure not to know. Why? Oh, bother it, Nina. I don't think I should be able to marry you after all. You see, I'd put that thousand pounds on Indian Runner to win. Well, that was silly. Can't you get it back? Oh, that's a good point. I'll see. I know the dinner gong yet. Oh, where's that fairy princess? Lottie, where's the Major? What Major? I never saw a Major. The one you introduced me to. How'd you know he was a Major? You said he was. I oh, did, child. I've never seen him before in my life. Um, <laughs> now, we must all go up to dinner. I should go up with you, King. Uh, I'm not feeling very hungry, to be honest. In fact, I'm feeling a little... Well, you hurry through to the gentleman's. The last man to be sick on that carpet was King Edward VII, and I gave him what for, I can tell you. By the way, why didn't you tell me it was fancy dress? I feel such a prune. Oh, fuck. No, you didn't. My dear. My good friend. Oh, look. Agatha. Usually worth a couple of paragraphs, but my editor's got her on the front page tomorrow anyway. Cussing's nonsense. Oh. And Adam's back. Not that he's worth a mention. Look, there's Simon and Van. Writing about us, I bet. Who they write something nice? Van described me as England's premier party animal last week, honestly. That's Adam Symes. He looks so dashing. Everyone looks dashing, don't they? Dashing is a new thing. Oh, I wish I was as sophisticated as I get the runcible. It only takes a little titanium on the cheek and a little less eyebrow. I can pluck them for you if you like. Really? Really, really? I oh, want you. I can't believe I managed to let her drag me from the customs like that. Now I've got Lottie's bill to pay and we can't get married. He's always my good pa. I believe he's much richer than he looks. I'd ask him to give us some money. You must be Adam. Archie Schwert. Such a wondrous party act. You are too clever. Uh, you should certainly win the costume prize. <laughs> Adam, you hideous ass. That's how Archie always dresses at parties. Orchid. Stop. New paragraph. Simon, comma, the Earl Balcan, comma, dressed as the most unconvincing Duke of Wellington. As in boots, yes. Yes. Might be worth sending a few photographers over. How too dreary. They're like flies, aren't they? I think they're after Agatha. You know, her father made the most crashing speech about customs officers in the House of Lords this evening. Several bishops burst into tears, apparently. It's that dreadful Simon Balcan. I swear he tips them off. Where are we going? Half past three. Lottie will be closing now. How about the Ritz? Oh, talk sense, dear. It's not while I'm dressed like this. I say my house, only I've lost my key. It's just too bogus of me. Why don't we all go on to my house? Is 
So that's agreed, then. You can go up to Doubting tomorrow, and I'll wire Daddy and tell him you're coming. Will he like me, do you think? No, oh, I couldn't be with you being so sweet and everything. Why can't you come, too? I already told you I have a pain. Bacon and eggs, everybody! Champagne! I'm having the oddest house. Do you think there are any glasses? I just don't know where Daddy keeps them. Such a bore, darling. So sorry, darling. Well, it is rather farouche drinking from decanters, after all. What strange ancestors you have, Jane. All so serious looking. It's as if they're gazing into my soul and finding something rather horrid. Well, they probably are. I say, Mary, what do you know of your mother's horse, Indian runner? No, oh, Adam, don't even think about it. Mummy says it's a donkey. Do you know Jane Brown? How do you do, Miss Brown? So sweet of you to have us all round. Oh, no. Such a pleasure. I often... do have some bacon. Thank you. Oh, I say, Jane, it will be all right me staying here tonight, won't it? You need my latch key. It'll be fine, Agatha, darling. Quite fine. Do you have a piano, dear? I have a strange longing to play something crimson and obscene by Bissoni. Or a rag. Do let's have a rag. I'm not sure. My father's asleep upstairs. He might... Oh. How boring. I saw some creme de menthe in the kitchen. What good's creme de menthe, child, when I wanted a piano? Only the piano's on the first floor. I don't suppose anyone has any naughty salt. You must go. There might be some in the kitchen. But the bacon's quite... No, dear. Naughty salt. Mother might just have some in her compact. Miles is being beastly and upsetting poor Jane. Besides, you've got to look all pretty and frisky for my papa. And how was Mr. Schwartz's dance, Jane? Did you have a good time? It was just too divine. It was what, Jane? I mean, it was lovely, Mama. I say, Mama, I asked a girl to stay the night. What an extraordinary thing to do. Did she accept? Yes. She's here now. Morning, all. The right room at last. Do you know I popped into a study or something? There was a sweet old boy sitting at a desk. He did look surprised to see me. Was it your papa? And this is Mama. How are you? I say I think it's simply too sweet of you to let me come down to breakfast like this. You sure you're not furious with me? All of this is really much more embarrassing for me, isn't it? Don't you think? Or don't you? Would you like to help yourself? Mother, the most extraordinary thing. I must be losing my reason. I was. In my study just now, I was just going over my speech, and then suddenly the door opened, and in came some sort of dancing hottentot woman. And it just said, Ew, how shy making. And then disappeared, and I turned away. <coughs> oh. How do you do? And this is my husband. I don't think you've met before. Only for a second. <laughs> Martha never told us we were having guests. I... Forgive me if I appeared a little inhospitable. <laughs> oh, why doesn't somebody say something? Oh, look. Monocle. Jimmy Vanbrugh's column. It's got the front page. Midnight orgies at number ten, it says. What a scream. Shall I read it to you? At about 4 a.m., the policeman posted outside the Prime Minister's residence was surprised to witness, isn't this too amusing, the arrival in Downing Street of a fleet of taxis from which emerged a gay throng in exotic fancy dress. How oh, I should have loved to have seen it. Can you imagine? Amongst those present was the Honourable Agatha Runce. Oh, that's me. What an extraordinary thing. Oh. Oh, my God. Begging your pardon, Sir James, uh, Mrs. Proudfoot wants to know why there is talcum powder on the table in the cabinet room. Talcum powder in the cabinet room? Well, it looks like talcum powder. 
But it doesn't smell of it, sir. Mrs. Proudfoot was wondering if it might be anarchist gunpowder and should we send for the army. Oh dear, this is really all too shattering. I think perhaps, don't see me out. I shall write the tenderest thank you letter, I promise. <laughs> Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. They need a good bloody war, if you ask me. Excuse me? That lot jiggering and jazzing about like Mexican beans. The sound of guns and the smell of gas. That is who stop all that. Disgusting. I should imagine it is. What? The sound of guns and the smell of gas. I should, I should imagine it is disgusting. Now, ooh, then. Ah, parasites. It's doubting all much further. About half a mile. Shilling a mile, 15 bob. Twice. What do you want? Good afternoon. Is, is Mr. Blunt here? There's no Mr. Blunt here. This is Colonel Blunt's house. I'm sorry, I think the Colonel is expecting me to lunch. Nonsense. I'm Colonel Blunt. Would you mind awfully if I could just telephone to the station for a taxi cab? I'm not on the telephone. Why don't you come in? It's absurd to walk to the station in this 15 miles, for God's sake. Are you mad? Come about the vacuum cleaner, have you? No. Hang your hat and coat here. I hope you haven't got wet. Shame you didn't bring your vacuum cleaner. Can't be helped. How are you? Do sit down. I must read this cable. I've quite forgotten. It came this morning. Oh, dear. Don't think me discourteous, but I'm afraid it's impossible for me to ask you to luncheon. I have a guest coming on intimate family business. It's some young rascal who wants to marry my daughter. Well, I want to marry your daughter, too. What an extraordinary thing. Are you sure? Well, perhaps the telegram is about me. What does it say? Engage Mary Adam Symes. Expect luncheon Nina. Are you Adam Symes? Yes. Well, why didn't you say so before? So we're going on about vacuum cleaners. How are you? Mrs. Florin, lay a place for Mr. Symes. Symes. Better give him his own decanters, Mrs. F. Hmm. Can't be passing up and down all the time. So you're the young fool who's going to marry my daughter. I very much hope so, sir. How much money have you got? Well, I had a thousand pounds last night. I gave it all to a drunken major. What do you do that for? Well, I, I hope to put it on Indian Runner for the November handicap. Never heard of the animal. When will you next have some money? Well, when I've written some books. You see, I owe Lord Monomark for an advance, and until I get it written, I rather hope, well, we rather hoped that you might help us. How could I help you? I've never written a book in my life. No. We wrote a letter to the Times once, never published. We thought that, well, that you might give us some money. You thought that, did you? I think that's an admirable idea. I don't see any reason why I should. How much do you want? Well, you know. Would a thousand pounds be any help? Yes, it would. Indeed. We'd both be terribly grateful. Not at all, my dear boy. What was your name again? Adam Symes. Oh. Fenwick Symes. You were Fenwick Symes at Oxford. My father. He wasted all his money on horses, too. Or was it women? Yeah! Books! 
beautiful men who did the rumba when they proposed to her, she simply left them flat. She said that love should be impulsive, but not convulsive, and syncopation had a discouraging effect on procreation, and that she'd rather read the book, and that was that. <laughs> They besought her to And in language profane and obscene She cursed the man who taught her to She cursed cold water to Daddy, what are you dancing like oh, that? Nina, I'm so excited Why, what's happened? Everything, I'll tell you in the car Come, the block at the hotel sent me some money So I've hired a car What have you done, Daddy? Please stop dancing about I can't stop Adam, you tell it. Look out of the window and see if you can see a limousine. Wait. Adam, what have you been up to? I will be told. Who had acquired a wooden leg in Venezuela? My dear, a thousand pounds. Did my papa give you that? Finally, I'm not dressed for dinner. I'll look after this check. Poor Adam. Why do you say that? I don't know. I say what a grand car. Nina, why did you say poor Adam? I don't know. not Chichester. It should be full of awful Chichester people. Brighton. Do be serious. They say Arundel's very pleasant at this time of the year, sir. Arundel? What fun. All right, then. Arundel. <laughs> we'll be married tomorrow, and we won't ask anybody to the wedding. Oh, blast. What is it? I've forgotten. Balcan's taking me to luncheon tomorrow. We're going to have to wait till the afternoon to marry. Simon, whatever for. I'll take you to Shea Espinosa and you won't get a thing to drink. No, I don't know. He wants a favour. Hell, writing Mr. Chatterbolt's probably. Oh, but I can't possibly marry you in the afternoon either. I'm having my hair done. You can't have forgotten it's Margot's party tomorrow. I don't believe you really think we are going to be married, Nina, do you? Or do you? Yes, I just... I don't know, I just... I don't believe that really divine things like that ever do happen, I don't... Why? Oh, I do like you so much tonight. I'll send the car back at Arundel and get a nice early train in the morning. Oh, darling, am I going to be seduced? I'm afraid you are. Do you mind, Terry? Not as much as all that. But... And you said really divine things didn't happen. I don't think it was at all divine. It's given me a pain. And now that it's morning, I've got something horrid to tell you. I don't think anything can ever be horrid ever again. About that check my papa gave you. Don't think it's going to help as much as you thought. That's a thousand pounds, isn't it? Just look at it, my sweet. I don't see anything wrong with it. Oh, good Lord, the old fool signed it, Charlie Chaplin. That's what I mean, darling. When did you notice the signature? As soon as you showed it to me last night. Only you looked so happy dancing about in my flat all by yourself, I didn't like to say anything. The old devil. Anyway, at least you've had some fun out of it, haven't you, or haven't you? Haven't you? Darling, I've never hated anything so much in my life still. As long as you enjoyed it, that's something. Charlie Chaplin, eh? That's rather priceless. I don't suppose I could use that in my car. Oh, certainly not. No, I thought not. Look, I uh, hope you don't mind coming here. It's, uh, truth is, I get meals free if I mention them occasionally in my page. Not, uh, not drinks, unfortunately. Alphonse, who's here? <laughs> yes, sir, uh, not a bad list. I'll see who I can mention. Thank you, my lord. Would you like a table? Cocktail? No, I don't think I want a cocktail. I haven't really time. Would you like a cocktail, Adam? They're not very good here. No, thanks. Are you sure? They're all sticking at this bloody table. The, um... Yes. The lager beer's rather good. 
The lager will be perfect. Two small glasses of lager, please. Certainly, sir. Are you sure? Yes, true. Oh, look, that's Brown, isn't it? The Prime Minister just leaving. Yeah, I rather think it is. I wonder if he's going to resign after they'll be met. Make us play typical of Vambra to get that juicy story about Agatha at Downing Street. I mean, why couldn't Miles have tipped me off instead? Just because they wouldn't let him, you know, in Oxford. God, what a cat, Miles is. Um, Adam, his mother's got a party tonight, hasn't she? For that uh, evangelist, Mrs. Melrose. Are you going? I think probably. Adam, I'll tell you a very odd thing. Margot hasn't sent me an invitation. Why not? Well, apparently she's in a rage about that picture of Mars in my column and all those nasty hints, even though I had nothing, nothing to do with it. People do take things so seriously. Adam, I tell you, it means ruin. Isn't that Pamela Popper? I have the faintest idea. No, but I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure it is. Now, tell me, is that... Is that what you call a cloche hat? Uh, I got into terrible trouble the other day about hats. The actor was raving. Ruin. I mean, Margot's invited Jimmy Vanborough, of course. Oh, yes. Well, Van's a cousin, isn't he? Well, so damned unfair. I mean, all my cousins are in lunatic asylums or else they live in the country and do indelicate things with wild animals. <laughs> if I miss this party, I may as well put an end to it all. I'm sure if Margot only knew how much it meant to me, she wouldn't mind my coming. Nobody invites me anywhere now. I tell you what, I know Margot pretty well. Why don't I ring her up and ask if you can come? <laughs> Would you? Would you, Adam? <laughs> Nothing. Really, I can't understand what the young see in this. These new crazies are simply inexplicable. Hello? Margot, it's Adam. Adam, darling. Now, don't tell me you're going to cry off. No, no. I, I just wondered if I might bring someone with me. Well, I really don't think you can. I can't imagine how everyone's going to get in as it is. No, Chastity, darling, not red, not at your age. It suggests all the wrong things, don't you feel? I'm terribly sorry, Adam. Who, who are you thinking of bringing? Simon Balken. He's terribly anxious to come. Yes, I dare say he is. I'm rather against that young man at the moment. <laughs> oh! Heavens. No, you can't bring Simon. He's been writing things in the papers, things about my son, Miles, which are beastly. Please, Margot. Certainly not. I won't have him inside my house. I only asked Bamber on the strictest understanding that he doesn't write a word about it. Mrs. Ape will be addressing everybody about Jesus. It could all be too shriek-worthy a disaster to think of. Absolutely not, Simon, of all people. You needn't tell me, I can tell. Two of my butterflies at once. Got your invitation to Lady Maitland's ball tonight, Balcarn? Of course, Lord Monomarch. You've been scooped by Vanborough's Lord Monocle column too often. Maybe I should give Chatterbox to Symes here. He owes me. I assure you, Lord Monomarch. Mm. Be careful who you write about. I'll be there myself. Oh, God. I'm done for. Poor Simon. I hope he doesn't do something desperate. He's so tense about everything. Well, you know why. Why? He's lonely. He's been in love with you for years. Mm, love. All this fuss about love and sleeping together. For physical pleasure, I'd sooner visit my dentist any day. It isn't so bad, though, is it? What? Love. Well, perhaps it's a thing one could grow to be fond of in time. Like olives, I suppose, or talking pictures. Still, it gives me a pain, and I doubt it's worth it. See? Angels come down from heaven to bless us. to have with us, fresh from her tour of Europe, Miss... I'm so sorry, her salvation tour of Europe, Mrs. Melrose Ape, 
and her angels of the glad new day. Girls, ain't no flies. Ain't no flies on the Lamb of God. He's smarter than a whip. He rules us all with an iron rod in his firm but tender grip. Jesus, Jesus, fly me to the sky. Lead us, lead us, Jesus, you're our God. So don't you mess with the Lord of hosts, or take him for himself. The Lord Forgive me, Richard. That man with the beard. You know him. Isn't he something in the foreign office? Sure, I've seen him somewhere before. Exactly. Prime Minister, there are spies everywhere. I think it would be better if we watched him. He looks slavonic. Uh, yes or no? Uh, central 4,000, please. Mm, yes. Ah! Uh, hello. Didn't know you were here, Father. I uh, just thought I'd use the telephone. Goodbye. Stay exactly where you are. And take off that beard. Don't if I do. Take, take off that beard! Oh. Well, if you will make such a thing about it, it hurts frightfully. Too, if you knew. There. Now, I think you should go and make Lady Thring take off her wig while you're about it. I seem to have overestimated the gravity of the situation. Who is this? What are my detectives? That is Mr. Chatterbox. Never heard of him. Don't believe there is such a person. He's clearly a Bolshevik spy. Lord Balcon, will you kindly leave my house immediately? My wife has made it abundantly... Lord what? Is this young man called Chatterbox, or is he not? Lord Monomark is here this evening. I shall certainly inform him of your behaviour. He writes for the papers. Oh, God. Not another. It's a conspiracy. You're a disgrace to democracy, sir. Europe is going up in flames, and all you can do is send photographers around to my home to distress my wife and family. In another age, I'd have had your horse whipped on the steps of your club. I'm being forced to resign because of you and your kind! Gentlemen. Prime Minister. Good night. I sincerely To hell with you all. Yourselves. Look inside yourselves. Deep, deep inside yourselves, beyond the glister of your parties and the saucy blades of your jewels. What a damned impudent woman! Impudent am I? Is it impudence to look upon sin and call it by its rightful name? Impudence to gaze upon Babylon and shriek down curses? Impudence to look upon your souls and see nothing but a black, empty void? Beautiful young people, that's what they call you. Beautiful young people, well, one out of three ain't bad, I guess. So that's rather good. Why won't you listen? Miles. The lives you lead aren't Make real lives. The steps you dance are the devil. Thank Step you, Mrs. Right Ape, for most nice. <laughs> Hello, Central 4000, please. Central 4000. Hello. Uh, 
Balkan here. <laughs> no, um, no, I don't want social. I, uh, I want news. News, my lord. Are you sure you don't want social? No. Yes, news. News. Thank you. Hello? Yes, sir. Hello. Balkan here. Um, stick one of the boys on to take this down, will you? The most shocking orgy since the days of Sodom and Gomorrah rocked society last night. Hold the presses. Get down to compositing. Now! The vulgar evangelist Mrs. Melrose Ape proudly revealed that her angels were no more than underage adornments on sale to the highest bidder. Meanwhile, tears coursing down her face, the Honourable Agatha Ronsible, whose repulsive liaison with the Prime Minister shocked the nation this week, bewailed her quote, ruined, bogus, vapid, bogus and worthless life, unquote. Yes, two bogus's. Mm. Lady Maitland, shrieking of her terrible dependency upon cocaine powder, threw off her chaparelli ball gown and stood naked upon the dance floor, an example quickly followed by old and young alike until only the servants remained clothed. A grotesquely hairy Archie Schwert, swinging naked from the chandelier, screamed that all his money derived from prostitution and the opium trade. Lady Maitland's son, Miles, howled and howled and confessed to an intimate beastliness involving five guardsmen of the royal household, two marines and a bricklayer from Huddersfield. Nina Blunt. Nina Blunt. Grasped her stomach, screamed she was a whore and misquoted several lines of Lady Macbeth whilst Adam Fenwick signed cried on heaven to bear witness to his talentless penury and hopeless illiteracy. Never, never, never have such scenes been witnessed in high society, that uneasy alliance between bright young things and old survivors. Perhaps this was the defining moment of our epoch of speed and syncopation, the so-called 20th century of angst, neurosis and panic. Reader, be glad that you have nothing to do with this world. Its glamour is a delusion, its speed a snare, its music a scream of fear. Faster and faster they swirl, sickening themselves with every turn. The faster the ride, the greater the nausea, the terror and the shame that you stop. Yes, that's it. Good night. King, that you? Have you seen it? Of course I want to sue! I want to sue, too. I want to sue you, Margot. I want to sue Monomark. I want to sue this whole damn country. How much? Well, am I covered? I don't know. Insurance against acts of God or acts of aristocrats. He was insane. He was upper class. He, he was English, for Christ's sake. You know why I sent for you. I need a new Mr. Chatterbox. And you owe me. <laughs> After this, surely you're going to have to close the column down. Are you crazy? We sold 100,000 extra copies this morning. I've had new advertisers on the telephone since 9 o'clock. No, no, the hysteria I can handle. And you're part of it. We take the initiative, make a story out of it. First thing we do is you write a piece. Last of the ball, Cairns. Pitch it strong. You knew the boy. He was my friend. Friend, don't hand me that, son. 
I'm offering you 15 pounds a week. He was only getting 10. Next year, when you finish your book, it will be greeted with great critical acclaim by all my newspapers. And don't forget, I'm chairman of the Montrose Literary Prize. Award-winning writer, Adam Sines. Sound good? Meanwhile, you'll be getting expenses. Go to all the parties and race meetings and balls you'll be going to anyway. The well, trouble is, I'm not allowed to write about anyone who was at Margot's last. I mean, half of them are suing. And the other half have only agreed not to on condition their names never appear in the column. You can always make them up, I suppose. Make them up? Half the people in the papers one's never heard of anyway. A load of soldiers and explorers and painters and composers and authors. Why not invent some new ones? Say, that might be rather something. We could have the beautiful Imogen Quest. Heiress, adventuress, absinthe drinker. Drug addicted, insatiable lesbian. Can't write that. I could imply it. So, Imogen Quest. And how about the sinister Count? Zelda. Nudist. And. And Yoda. I say this could be rather fun. I could even make up fashions. If I can't get Archie Schwert to wear suede shoes by the end of the month, you can call me Deirdre in public. Yellow suede shoes. Darling, you're a genius. <laughs> and green bowler hats. for the November handicap stop. Oh, my dears, this is the this most of them all. To Manchester races tomorrow for the November handicap. Count Zeldorf, now romantically linked to man-hating Imogen Quest, Tiger Darling's feet off the table, I think, is expected to be there in one of the new green bowler hats sweeping society. Green bowler hats. Imagine. <laughs> Imogen Quest. Everyone's going on about her. I don't believe there is such a person. Archie told me he'd met her, didn't you, Archie? Imogen? Known her for years. It's cold and windy and I'm bored. Francis, pack everything up, there's a chap. You have to collect my willing. Nina, I believe you know who Chatterbox is. No, really, I don't. Do I, Adam? No, I haven't a clue. You full of horrid feeling, it might be you, Miles. Adam, if only. So, the money. Oh, by the way, by the way, I do hope you're all going to come and see Tiger here and his darling little racing car winning the RMS trophy next week. Oh, I say, can we? Well, I dare say I could get you in. Uh, could we be, how do you say it? Backstage? I reckon so. You'll have to pretend to be mechanics. Only officials are allowed in the pit. Oh, Adam, let's go. I love cars. You look far too pretty to be a fast driver, Tiger. Oh, dear. Is that an awful thing to say? Oh, darling, he's not called Tiger for nothing. Behind the wheel, this cherub becomes a demon. <laughs> Follow mother! Oh, such larks. Somebody galloping three to one. They're being fast at three o'clock. The chorus, ladies and gentlemen. Last chance to punt. Well, let's try it out. He can drive us back to London. Prentice can make his way by train, can't you, Prentice? Sir. Well, let's go back now, then, before it gets dark. the November handicap. Why isn't that young poltroon wearing a top hat? Nina. What, darling? That voice. Uh, never mind. Look, I have to stay, really. This is Chad's boss. The big race is coming up. Well, I'll stick with you then, darling. We can go down by train. Too much Agatha and too much Miles are just so... Uh, too much. Whereas too much me... It's not nearly enough. <laughs> I say, look, there's someone actually in a green bowler. Yeah. Uh, 
de Londres. Oh. Who should I bet on for the November handicap? Too late, love, but under orders. Oh. Nina. Angel boy. It's not really enough to get married on, is it? Fifteen pounds a week. Because you could always go and see Papa again. Now you're a successful journalist, you might take me more seriously. Oh dear. What? Number seven, isn't it too unbearable? Number seven? It's Indian runner. 33 to 1. Who ever even heard of Indian bloody runner? On it. Oh my god, I was right. 33,000 pounds. My major! My bloody major! Hello? <laughs> Planting tea in salon, and I haven't seen him for simply years. Isn't that a thing? Very little, Doc. And I say, do call me Ginger, everybody does. It. Hang on. Don't I know you, then? Shepherd's Hotel, you did a coin trick. Well, dash me twice. Your friend won a thousand pounds off me. Very clever fella. That thousand pounds should now be thirty-four thousand. Do you remember me giving it to a drunken major? Hmm. Yeah, you won't see him for dust. Also, at the time, didn't like to say, I know old majors. Yeah, they're thick on the ground in Colombo. Don't pay their bridge there. It's famous for it. Mm, bad luck. Look, I don't know about you two, but I'm just about fed up with racing. Why don't you come back to town with me? My bus is parked outside. I'll just settle up here. Oh, wait a minute. Pot sterling simple gold coming out of his ears. I thought we were going to stay up here and see your father. Look, why don't you stay up and, and you can see my papa in the morning and then we'll dine together tomorrow night and you can tell me all about it. I've got bags to catch up on with old Ginger here. Come on, then. What about tomorrow's Mr Chatterbox? I can't very well write about a night at a Manchester hotel and a visit to your father, can I? Why don't I write it for you? I'll be in London. I know just the kind of things you say. All right, well, I'll wire tonight's through to the paper and you can do tomorrow. Just a bit of luck running into you, old girl. That's why I know anyone in the old world now. I'm sitting around a shepherd's board of a gherkin tree. Where am I? <laughs> Sorry! Good afternoon, Lord Monarch. I was hoping to see you here, wanted a word. Now see here, Symes, I like your page. It's peppy. Lots of new names. It's got the intimate touch, which I like. I read it every day, so does my daughter. We haven't had one single libel action since you took over, which is fine. Now, what's all this about bottle green bowlers? Well, there are only a limited number at present, sir. You got one? Let me see a green bowler. Well, I don't actually wear one myself, I think. Well, where have you been seeing them? I haven't seen one. The, well, there was a young man here earlier who... One swallow does not a summer make, nor one had a fag. And another thing, Count Zeldorf. I don't say he doesn't exist, but Ambassador von Ribbentrop doesn't know a thing about him. And I'm not in the business of defending Herr Hitler. So no more about him and no more publicity for the restaurant Espinosa's. They made out my bill wrong last night. Espinosa's is the only place where I... Got those three things clear? Green ballers, Zeldorf, Espinosa's. Tabulate them in the mind, my boy. One, two, three. Keep it in the memory. Tabulation. Major. So, how is Papa? Very amiable. It's 10,000 this time. Greta Garbo. Mm. Oh, well. I don't bother about him anymore. By the way, I shan't be able to come to the motor racing. What? I promised I'd help Ginger find somewhere proper to live. He's fed up with hotel life. We you know how thieving and ghastly those houses can be. I tried to telephone you last night. Well, darling. It was Rolo Littlemore's 21st, and I thought it'd be worth going for the sake of Mr. Chatterbox. You know, I think I make rather a good journalist. What did you write? A few things about Rolo being expelled from Eton, and then, of course, I put in lots of imaginary things, and... What sort of imaginary things? Oh, I don't know. I said I saw Count Zeldorf going into Espinosa's in a green bowler, you know, things... You like... said that? Yes. Wasn't that a good thing to say? I thought that's what you... Uh, Darling? Excuse me, monsieur. What's wrong? 
A central uh, 4,000, please. Sign's here. Put me through to the night editor, please. Got a message for you. A message? To put you straight through to his lordship. No, 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 no. Hang, hang, hang on a second. Signed? Oh, uh, good, good evening, Lord Monomark. Bad tabulation there, young Symes. Yeah, I, I'm awfully sorry. I'm disappointed in you. Can't pretend I'm not. You're fired. And now, Mrs. Simpson, how can I persuade you to return to America? Bored already? I mean, you'd think there'd be a blue bar. Someone said something very encouraging about a divine tent. Officials, drivers, mechanics, stewards, and family only passes points. We're family. Oh, yes. Which car? Tiger Labouchere. He's my husband. It's your what? My friend is confused, darling. Tiger is my husband. Look, there he is. Uh, how dreamy he is. What is it about boys in God? Hit 13. Ah, oh, my lucky number. You should be in Brassards by right. What's a Brassard? You've got someone fancy. I'm the spare mechanic. How blissfully savage. Now, rules. You can watch from the pit on trackside. You're not allowed to hand me anything direct, but if I raise my left hand as I come through the pit, that means I shall be stopping next lap. What does it mean if I wave this flag? Would you want me to stop? But Angel Botty, why should we want you to stop? Well, you might see something wrong with the car. Or one of the officials might want the number plate clean. Now, look here, Miles. Less of the angel body. These people know me. Well, clearly they don't, darling. But don't worry, I shall be discretion herself. Would like to remind Let's go away before they come back. No, I think we'd better. I'm sure it's empty. Let's find that divine tent and have a drink. Well, look, there's your boyfriend again. Persistent, I'll give him that. There you are! You know, I've been chasing you all over London. Where the devil have you been? Well, I've been staying at Boston. But you never heard of you. I've got to admit, I'd had rather a few too many that night, and to tell you the truth, I woke up and things were rather a blur. And then I found a thousand quid in my pocket. You all came back to me. Some covert lotties had given me his bundle to put on Indian Runner. Now, as far as I knew, Indian Runner was no good. I didn't want to lose your money for you, but the devil of it was I didn't know you from Adam. From Adam? That's rather priceless. Neither did Lottie, apparently. You don't mean to say you've still got my thousand? Well, on the day of the race, I didn't know what to do. One half of me said, keep the thousand, chap's bound to turn up sometime, and it's his business to do his own funding. The other half said, put it all on the favourite and give him a run for his money. So you put it all on the favourite? Well, in the end, I said, young chap must be frightfully rich. If he wants to throw his money away, it's none of my business. So I planked it all on Injun Runner for you. You mean? I mean, I've got a nice little packet of 34th hour waiting for you to condescend to pick it up. Good heavens. Well, look here, have a drink, won't you? Ah, that's a thing I never refuse. Archie, lend me some money till I get this fortune, can you? Well, how much do you want? Enough to buy five bottles of champagne. Darling, just think what parties you could have. How well your lady friend moves, sir. 
Look here, old boy. It makes me feel an awful ass with my note case was pinched in the crowd. Couldn't possibly lend me a fiver, could you? I'll give it to you at the same time I hand over the 34th hour. Of course. Archie, lend me a fiver, okay? Awfully good of you. Would it be all the same if we made it a tenner while we're about sorry, it? Sorry, Ivan. That's all right, don't care. get home. Quite understand, not another word about it. Right. Look, you roll along to the Imperial about seven o'clock. I'll give you your money then. <laughs> Glad to get it off my chest. <laughs> Wow, 34,000. Auntie must powder her nose. Would Mark's be a dog? Going down. What's wrong with your driver? Why don't you just hold the spanner at it? Do you want to scratch? Who's the spare? Who's the spare driver? Oh, wait, it's me. It's on my arm. Oh, you going to scratch? Certainly not. What's your name? Agatha. I'm the spare driver. It's on my arm. Yes, I can see it is. Um, all right, then, start off as soon as you like. She's not... No, no, no. Rules are rules. In your pop, miss. In your pop. It's on my arm. I say, Agatha, are you, are you sure you're all right? It says on my arm. I mean, yeah. there's a good deal of Don Perignon swashing her out inside you. You're quite sure it's absolutely safe. Oh, absolutely safe, Adam. I'm going to throw but, uh, I'll get quiet at first until I get used to it. Well, goodbye. Oh, that's still scary. <laughs> Lucky for me, a really good story on my second day as Mr. Chatterbox. Where's that woman gone with my bloody car? Oh, she'd probably remembered a party somewhere. I expect you'll find it neatly parked and polished and pretty in Berkeley Square. Shall we then? This motor racing is a bore. I beg your pardon. I take the trouble to find you oh, your... Don't be stiff and pompous, Tiger, dear. Tiger, we've had a splendid day. We've enjoyed ourselves immensely, but it's getting late and I have to be in town to pick up a fortune. If there's so much as a scratch on her bonnet... I... I don't think she was wearing a bonnet, to be honest. You bloody people. Who the bloody hell do you think you are? If you'd just like to sign in, Your Excellency. Oh, the Excuse me. A moment, sir. Your telegrams, Your Excellency. And your key. Thank you. Miss. Hello. My money. Money? A thousand pounds past thirty-three thousand in minutes. Oh, there. Safe enough. Union Bank of London. Never put your money into anything that wasn't straight, old boy. No, of course not. It's very kind of you to have looked after it for me. Listen, you said you'd give me a cheque this evening. Ah, that's another matter. I told someone I'd give them a cheque. But how do I know it was you? You might be a crook. Look, I've got two friends waiting for me in the Palm Court who'll swear to you I'm Adam Symes. Will that do? You might be a gang. Besides, I don't know what the name of the chap who gave me the thousand pounds was. And then I got your word for it. And I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll sleep on it. I'll tell you my decision when I wake. Don't think me suspicious, old boy, but I've got to be careful. Mm. We've just heard they found Agatha at Euston Station. Staring fixedly at a model engine in the central hall, apparently. The station master asked her name and she just pointed to her arm and said she was the spare driver. So they've carted her off to a mental home. What? Did you, uh, get your fortune? Uh, the major's too drunk to recognise me. He's just gone to sleep. 
You know, I saw that major, but I'm afraid he may be bogus. You haven't got any money. No job, no money. We shan't be getting married soon. Not soon. I see. Well? I said I see. Is that all? Yes, Adam, that's all. Sorry. I'm sorry, too. Goodbye. Goodbye, Nina. Me. When did you last pay us, dear? I must make up that bill of yours sometime. I expect you're right. By the way, Lossie, that foreign monarch, is he still staying here? The king of where was it? Yeah. You might give him this. Oh! <laughs> Busy, but uh, there is a telephone for the Mr. Symes. Thank you, Basilia. Oh, Lord, it's mascara. What am I going to do with her? Darling, I'm afraid I've got something rather awful to tell you. I'm engaged to be married. Who to? I hardly think I can tell you. Who is it? Ginger. <laughs> I don't believe it. Well, I am. That's all there is to it. You're going to marry Ginger? Yes. I see. Well? I said I see. Is that all? Yes, Nina, that's all. When shall I see you? I don't want ever to see you again. I see. Well? I said I see. Well, <laughs> goodbye. I told you it wouldn't be that hard, I know. Um, don't do that, Ginger, darling. Your moustache tickles. see who it is. And there are some cocktail things in the wardrobe. Do make a big one. You look just like Adam Sides. How are you feeling, Aggie? I'm rather odd, to tell you the truth. How's Nina? She's got engaged to be married. Ginger, I expect. Darling, you're so sweet. Everyone guessed. Pots of money. Are you very upset? Desperate. Thinking of committing suicide like Simon. Don't do that, darling. Too many people are disappearing. Did you get your money? No, the drunken major's disappeared, too. I guess I have nothing. I'm smashed up. All the peace. You know, all that time I was dotty. I had the most awful dreams. I thought we were all driving round and round at a motor race and none of us could stop. And there was an enormous audience composed entirely of gossip writers and gate crushers and Archie Schwert and bogus people all shouting at us to go faster. And car after car kept crashing until I was left all alone, driving and driving. And then I would crash and wake up. Aggie, darling, how are you? Goodness, how gothic, how gloomy, how grim. Oh, my dear, how blind-making. I bought some records in a funny little shop. You are angelic. Do let's try them. There's a gramophone under the bed. I saw lots of people at Margot's. Some are coming round, do you mind? No, let's have a party. We've never had a party in a mental home before, have we? Or have we? Have we? So sorry. <laughs> oh, so silly. <laughs> Only it's the beastliest thing. <laughs> I've got to go now. Train, France. <sighs> it's, it's so unbearably. 
unbearable. <laughs> Tiger. Tiger of all people. Tiger? He, he left um, some letters for me lying around. The police have them. There's a warrant for my... I can't even go and pack. <laughs> Hello, Maggie. Oh, I say. Miles, what's up? Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, Archie. You'll have a good story today, Bab. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Nina. Miles is in a scrape again. What's happened? Everyone's going round and round and round. Can you dancing, everybody? That's a smooth country. <laughs> Please. Oh, no. Well, this is all a bit bloody. I thought you were never going to speak to me again. Well, it had to happen, didn't it? Agatha's looking better than I expected. Oh, Nina. What is it, darling? Oh, Nina, what a lot of parties. I know. Oh. You're so hot. Masked parties, savage parties, Victorian parties, Greek parties, Wild West parties, Russian parties, circus parties, parties where you have to dress as somebody else, almost... Naked parties in St. John's Wood, parties in flats and studios and houses and ships and hotels and nightclubs in swimming baths and windmills. Dances in London so dull. Comic dances in Scotland and disgusting dances in the suburbs. All that succession and repetition of massed humanity, all those vile bodies. And now a party in a mental hospital. Come back with me to Lottie's tonight. No. Please. Since you wouldn't like it. Nina, do you love him? Oh, Adam, how can you ask? Then why? Oh, Adam, how can you ask? Money. Bloody money. It's all very well to look down on money, but a girl's got to look after herself these days. Come and dine with me at Lottie. Didn't you wouldn't understand. Last time, Nina. Well, I believe you knew I was going to. Oh, darling. If only you were as rich as Ginger. Or even half as rich. Nasty, angry fellow in here for you today. Look like a debt collector. Vulgar moustache. I told him you'd gone to Newcastle. <laughs> Them like debt collectors. What about my little Bill? We were thinking of a spot of dinner first. In the dining room, dear? Um, of course not. I'll have Basilio bring it up to your room. Darling, up to divine. How are you? How are you? How angelic of you all to come. Ouch. 
and you must take care not to fall out of the corners. I wish I knew which thing was which in this car. Darling, do try and drive straight. Faster. 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 the first day I met you. Back of the night I came down to Oxford to visit Miles. You don't seem to be enjoying yourself very much this evening. Sorry. Not being a bore. I suppose I should go home now, really. What's the matter? Give anything in the world for something different. Yes, but you don't have anything. Mm. Oh. You do give me pain, you know. Such a pain. and have a glass of wine, eh? That's it. <laughs> mm. Now, dear, what about my bill? Oh, yes. Of course. Well, well, have it made up and sent up to me. I've got it here. <laughs> Bless you. What a lot you seem to have drunk. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I'll send you down a cheque. No, dear, suppose you write it down here. Here's the pen. Here's the ink. And, oh, here's a blank checkbook. All right. Seventy-eight pounds. Sixteen shillings. And tuppence for the cheque. And tuppence. Charlie Chaplin. There. Adam Fenwick Symes. What a childish scrawl. <laughs> Charlie Chaplin, indeed. Private Jack. Look who's turned up. If it's Mr. Archer, do. Come in and have a glass, dear. <laughs> you know, I knew you before you were born. <laughs> yes, hello, Lottie. Look here, Simes, I want to speak to you. Perhaps we might go somewhere where we won't be disturbed. Bless you, boys. You just have a nice chat. There's no one in the bar parlour. I won't bother you. I have lots to do. <laughs> and may the best man win. What I'm about to say is that what I'm about to say may sound damned unpleasant, you know, and all that, but look here, you know, damn it. I mean, the better man has one. Morning. Not, um, but I'm saying that I'm the better man. I wouldn't say that for a moment. All for bad luck on you and all that, but still, when you come to think of it, I mean, look here, you know, damn it. Do you see what I mean? Not quite. Is it something about Nina? Yes, it is. We are engaged. I'm not having you butting in or there'll be hell to pay. What makes you think I'm butting in? Oh, hang it all. You, 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 you dined with her last night and stayed out jolly late, too. How do you know we stayed out jolly late? Well, um, as a matter of fact, I had to talk to her about something jolly important and I called her up once or twice and didn't get an answer until three o'clock. I suppose you rang her every ten minutes. Well, not as often as all that. <clears throat> hey, I've known her since we were children. I used to play with her, a friend of the family. I mean, I, I, I know you were sort of engaged, but believe me, I had her photo by my bed in salon. Uh, yeah, that sounds rather wet, but there you are. I mean, the thing is, I trust her. I mean, of course I trust her. I don't kid myself. No oil painting. She doesn't like my tash, but my upper lip's got a birthmark on it. Right. You're saying she doesn't love you? You're brainy. You don't have a port wine stain on your upper lip. You may be broke, but girls are odd. I want you to promise me... How much is she worth to you? Come again? I'll sell her to you. Good God, damn it. I'll sell my share in Nina for a hundred pounds. 
You pretend to be in love with her and you talk about her like that. It's not decent. Right. Hundred pounds is the juice of a lot. Just put a deposit of five hundred down a place in Charles Street. Investment's going up and down. Marriage isn't cheap. You know. Hundred pounds down and I leave Nina to you. I think it's cheap. Fifty. A hundred. Seventy-five. A hundred? Down if I'll pay any more than seventy-five. I'll take seventy-eight pounds, sixteen shillings and tuppence. I can't go lower than that. All right. You really will go away? I'll try, Ginger. Let me show you what an escape mean has heard. Poor girl. I don't think you're a gentleman, sir. Neither do I. Miss Blunt's resident. Nina, it's Adam. Oh, hello, darling. I thought you might be Ginger. I woke up feeling I couldn't face him. He rang up last night just as I got in. And... Anyway, I, I don't think I want to marry him after all. So, Nina, rather strange things happen. Lottie presented her bill. Oh, Adam, what did you do? Well, I, I did something rather extraordinary. My dear, I, I sold you. Darling, who to? Ginger, you came round in a bait. You, you fetched 78 pounds and 16 shillings. Well. And tuppence. Goodbye, Nina. Sir, how may I thank you? You find my pen with the dead eagles. God bless you. God bless you. I am mad with joy. Oi! Not at all, sir. Come and listen to the wireless. The funniest thing. That they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. You wrote back at last. How proud of you I am. Everyone says you should have a VC. Now, darling, the baby is called Tommy. And he looks so like a miniature you. Of course, Ginger is convinced that he's the father. He and little Tommy are in a ghastly house in Platt Street, but Angel, guess where I'm living now to be near my new job? Shepherd's Hotel, of all places. Do hurry home, darling. They've started bombing London, which is horrid. Pendahal! Oh. I say, it's all right! I'm English! I'm English! Hello! Hard to tell in this smoke. My God, you're the drunk major. I'm not drunk, damn you, sir! And what's more, I'm a general! What the deuce are you doing here? Well, to tell the truth, sir, I've lost my platoon. Lost your platoon? I've lost my whole bloody division! Is it all over, sir? Hard to say, frankly. Thing to do is head to the beaches and see if the Navy can pick us up. Not that things are any better in London. They bombed St James's last night. Shepherd's Hotel flattened. Poor old Lottie. Hang on, Lottie. I know you from her, don't I? I owe you some money. Thirty-four thousand pounds. Thirty-four thousand and five. Never forget a debt! Looked for you everywhere before this scrap started. Even went to bloody Newcastle. Might as well give you a check here and now. Shepherd's Hotel completely gone. Yep, all dead. Name? Adam Fenwick Sines. Shared a trench with a major Fenwick Sines during the last show. My father. He played the fool too. Or was it the violin? Ha! There you go. Thank you. Got a case of bubbly in the car. Let's see if there's any life in it.
blown away on the beach by them Stukas, sir. Bloody miracle, eh? Yes. Bloody miracle. We in Dover. That's right, sir. Break open the store. It's customs and excise property, sir. Break it open, private. Sir. You sure you know what you're doing, sir? There's something of mine in here. At least it might still be here. So what brings you to sunny Platt Street? I just came to see you and the boy. I can't offer you much to drink. I'm well done on all those medals. Fan bin for my fallen arches. My asthma. Absolutely. Tommy! Turn that row off. Come meet your godfather. Sorry, we didn't ask your permission. Um, Nina didn't give mine. Hello, Tommy. Hi, madam. How do you do? How do you do? Ginger, did they ever find Nina? Hmm? Nina? She's having a whale of a time at the factory. She's alive. Well, of course she is. Well, I thought everyone at Shepherds was killed. Oh, um, Nina was on night shift. No, she'll be back later. This war's been all right for some. I'm going to be arrested. Arrested? Bloodiest thing. Try and help people out. Little petrol here. Some of life's little luxuries there. I mean, dash it, walk on all be misery. Anyway, I've had everything confiscated. I'm going to be arrested. Are you so chap? Yes, Tommy, I am. We're all just so damnably unfair. All right, for some. I just had some cash. I could make it to Ireland and over to America. They appreciate people like me in the States. How much? Hmm? How much do you need? Well, a lot of people to sweeten on the way. How would 34,000 do? 34,000 pounds? And five. I'll buy Nina and Tommy off you for 34,000 and five. Haven't we done this before? Ginger Little John, in consideration of the sum of thirty-four thousand and five pounds, do relinquish all claims on my wife Nina Little John and son Thomas Edward. Signed, Ginger Little John. Have I been sold again? Do you mind terribly? Have we any money left? None at all.
It's time for little girls and boys to hurry home to bed. Poor bells on you day, waiting just ahead. Life is sweet, but time is sweet beneath the magic of the moon. Dancing time may seem sublime, but it is ended all too soon. The thrill has gone to linger on, but smile it anyhow. Let's creep away from the day for the party.